In this recording, I hope to achieve two things based on John Fairline's text section 16. Number one, construct a faithful group action based on existing group action on a set X and show you an example of a faithful group action. Recall from the previous video, that is group action on a set part 3 if G X on X, then the subgroup N consists of all the elements in G such that G cap X equal to X for all element X of X here. This subgroup N is a normal subgroup of G. Now I am going to define a new group action. The quotient group G by N X on X. How? First of all, we notice that G by N consists of all the left coset G times N for all element G of the group G. Notice that there is no distinction between left coset and right coset because N is normal in G. Now the definition of the group action is G by N X on X Take any element in G by N Say G N X on X now And this is equal to G cap X The question we're going to ask is Does this make sense? Because it is possible That for the two left coset of N Say G1 N and G2N are equal, but G1 not equal to G2. Then what is the problem now? Because if G1N equal to G2N and G1 not equal to G2, then we expect G1N cap X must be equal to G2N cap X. But then what is G1N cap X? According to our construction, is G1 cap X and what is G2N cap X? According to our construction is G2 cap X but G1 is not equal to G2 how can this be possible? No worries I guarantee if G1N is equal to G2N then G1 cap X must be equal to G to cap X. Here is the proof. Suppose G1 N equal to G to N. If you multiply both sides by G2 inverse on the left, so we get G2 and G1 N is equal to G2 inverse of G2 is E so E times N is N therefore we conclude G2 inverse G1 belong to N now recall what is N N consists of all the elements in G such that G cap X equal to X for all X inside the set so now because G2 inverse G1 is inside N so it will leave every element in X fixed so G2 inverse G1 cap X will be X again now apply G2 cap on both sides Now using group action XM3, this is equal to G2 times G2 inverse G1 cap X on the left hand side and equal to G2 cap X on the right hand side by GA3. But then 
G2 times G2 inverse is E. E times G1 is G1. So we have G1 cap X equal to G2 cap X. So therefore, we can conclude that as long as G1N equal to G2N, then G1 cap X must be equal to G2 cap X. So this group action makes sense. Now, if G over N X on X given by G N cap X equal to G cap X now, this group action makes sense. The next question we want to ask is, which element in G by N leaves every X fixed? Let's investigate. Suppose element of G by N, as a G times N, leave element X fixed for all X here. Then G N cap X we know is G cap X now. So that is G cap X equal to X for all X. That means that G is an element, this element small g here is an element of N. So we conclude that Gn is equal to n now. Therefore, Gn is actually the identity element of G by n. This leads us to a definition. G acts faithfully on the set x if any element G such that G cap x equal to x for all x belong to x here, then g must be e. So if you have this kind of group action, then this type of group action is a faithful group action. So for example, the above group action, g by n, x on x, given by the left quotient gn, x on x, equal to g cap x here, this is a faithful group action as we have seen a calculation just now. Now, can I have an example of a faithful group action? Yes, you can find this in John Schwaline's text 16.4 example. It says that let G X on G that is, you take the set x equal to g and define a goal action as g1 cap g2 will be g1 times g2 for any g1 and g2 in the group g. Now, the question we ask, is this really a group action? So, you must check ga1, ga2, ga3 that they are satisfied. So let's check GA1 first. You know that if you have two elements G1 and G2 in G, then G1 cap G2 of G1 times G2 still belong to G. This is by the closure property of G. GA2. We know that E cap G is equal to E times G, which is also equal to G because E is the identity element of G. Let's check GA3. For every G1, G2, and G3 in G now, then G1, G2, cap G3, according to the definition of this particular group action, is G1, G2 multiplied by G3. Now, using the associativity of the binary operation in the group G, this is equal to G1 times G2, G3. G2, G3. This is equal to G1 cap, G2, G3. By the definition of this particular group action. And then G2, 
multiply by G3 is actually G2 cap G3. And this shows that GA3 is satisfied. Therefore, if the group G X on G given by G1 at G2 is G1 times G2, this is already a group action. Now, we're going to show that this is a faithful group action. What does it mean by faithful group action? It means that if G cap X equals X for all X here, then G must be E. How do we show that? Now, for this particular action, if G cap X equals X, on the left hand side, G cap X is G X. So I, so I have G X equal to X now. Now multiply both sides by X inverse, since X inverse is an element of G also. Therefore, G times X times X inverse equal to X times X inverse. And we know X times X inverse is E. So G times E equal to E. And G times E is actually G, since E is identity, so we end up G is equal to E. And this means that if G cap X equal X for all X, G must be equal to E now. So we conclude. If G cap X equal to X for all X, then G equal to E as I have shown you just now. Therefore, this action, this group action of G X on G, where G1 at G2 is G1 times G2, is a faithful group action.